First of all, I'd just like to show you um, a picture of my little girl, Amy, because I try and get her into every presentation. <laughs> this is a few months ago, but perhaps to make it a bit more accurate, I should show that picture of her a year ago. Because Puta was one of her first words, and she's growing up in a world where um, technology is going to be standard. Broadband to her is going to be like running water and piped gases to me, you know, something that almost every single person has. So, a little fictitious story for you. Um, funny thing happened on the way to the theatre. A taxi driver picked me up, and it turned out to be the same taxi driver who picked me up um, last night when I'd been rip roaring drunk. I told you this was fictitious. Um, and he said, God, you look a lot better today. And I said, well, last night was fun. He said, well, it was fun for you, but God, you look wrecked. And I said, oh, cheers. And strangely, the same sort of thing happened on Facebook recently. A colleague had invited me out for drinks. I told you this was fictitious. And, um, and he um, uploaded a photo of me and tagged me in it and all my friends liked it and commented on it and said, oh, you look wrecked. And I said, oh, cheers. Um, and I'll come back to those stories in just a moment because I want to focus a bit more on social networking because we think of it about being connections. But it's actually processes as well. So let's say I go abseiling, put a comment on Facebook saying, been abseiling and Ken Scott there says, oh, that's brilliant, we're going paintballing on Saturday, do you want to come? So, I look up on Wikipedia and Facebook and talk to people in the real world about paintballing and decide, yeah, despite the bruises, I'll join a group and I'll go. So I go paintballing, that isn't me, it's fictitious, and um, I didn't like the bruises. Put that on Facebook and someone says, hey, we're going skydiving next week, do you want to come? <coughs> Explore that, and that cycle goes on and on and on. Now, an exaggerated example, but that's a process that's happening all the time with comments that I'm putting on Facebook, with photos I'm putting on Facebook. It's a cycle that just goes round and round. And is that really the same as that cycle that we've been talking about for years, the Kolb cycle? And of course it's been going on for years, but the difference is now it's being recorded all the time in social media. All that learning's being recorded. And I think that's quite fascinating. And that brings me to my next point, and for that I'm just going to pop back to those stories, because the first story you probably thought about a funny conversation I had. The second story you probably thought was something about Facebook. Whereas, in fact, Facebook was just the tool. And in the first one, the taxi was the tool. But how many people thought to themselves, oh, this is a story about a taxi ride? Because the tool of the taxi has been with us for so long that it's just part of it. And as learning practitioners, we quite often do that with these tools. We've got all these different tools that could be used. And there's one that's been with us for a long time, and that's this, the classroom. And we don't really think of it as a tool anymore. We've kind of promoted it to being where the learning takes place. And as part of that, if the slide actually changes, um, we start looking at the other tools that can exist in there, and we allow those to be used in the classroom, as long as they don't disrupt it. And of course, as soon as they start disrupting it in the classroom, we ban those tools. Because how dare some tools disrupt this one tool where we want learning to take place? We can't have that. Classroom is where learning takes place. But other places bring people together, places like the work place, where we do allow a lot of this technology. I mean, Facebook, a lot of workplaces still don't allow, but increasingly they are, because they want us to collaborate. They want people to be sharing ideas. And so that learning is taking place there. And the other place, of course, that brings everyone together is um, people's social lives. And in these social lives, you've got no barriers. You've got all this technology that we've heard about in all these Petra Coochers, um, and people can use it all the time. And that learning, that cycle of those comments are, is happening all the time, everywhere. In fact, when the slide changes, I'll give you some examples of um, where it's going, because I'm talking too fast. <laughs> <laughs> happening at home, on the bus, in the pub, in the cafe, the cinema, and even the hospital, it's just not ever happening in the classroom. And that disturbs me a bit, because what that's saying is that learning, that cycle, which is happening naturally, it's happening everywhere other than the classroom. And that's possibly because we're still thinking of the classroom as being where learning takes place. And it's not. The classroom is only a tool. The learning is what's important. And that goes back to uh, the hedge school, Hedge Kucha this morning. You know, it doesn't have to be in a classroom. So as we move forward into uh, this new century, we have to start looking at what tools we have got. And these are the tools as I see them. I mean, there's more than this, but the traditional paper and pen, the media te um, and technology, but also the classroom and the bringing people together physically, activities and social media. They're all different tools. So where does that leave? Where does that leave the um, metaphorical classroom, the place where people come together to learn? Well, I'd say it's wherever we are 
and whatever we're doing. The classroom is us. Us, using these tools, become the place where everyone comes together to learn. And that cycle of learning can then take place anywhere that we are. So where does that leave the school, or the ACL provider, or the college? Where, where do they fit? <coughs> well, I say they're the way of bringing things together. So it could be in a traditional classroom. Sometimes that is the best tool. It could be an institutional VLE, like Moodle or the virtual classroom, where we're doing the same type of education, but on a different scale, in a different way. But then it could be something completely different. What we could be looking at doing is getting all that learning that's taking place already and bringing it together. This is a model of a Google ePortfolio system, where all these different things that you might be using, like Google Apps and Gmail and eBlogger, can all be brought together using Google Sites. So all that learning that's taking place can be recorded in one place and submitted for something. And this you may not have come across. This is Facebook Docs. Anybody come across that? It's only been out a few weeks. It allows you to make Word, PowerPoint and Excel documents and put them into your Facebook pages and into your Facebook profiles and share them and collaborate on them. It's docs.com for anybody who wants that. Sorry. Oh, right, lovely. Well, there you go. There's the last slide. <laughs> Thank you very much.